Hello all. I thought I'd add in a little bit more detail about spill and maybe some other things, but uh, let's just go at it. Uh, this is already somewhat painterly, but it has some nice color and contrast in it. Uh, some detail, some uh, not so detailed areas. So let's just see what happens if we put an impression on here. And I'm going to use one of my favorites here, type 16. And then I'm going to take the brush size up. I'm going to leave it on medium for now, see what happens. We'll put the paint volume up, the large brush volume up all the way up and the paint opacity up so that we can really see what is happening here. I'll put in a little color variation for fun. Okay, so let's zoom in a bit more. I think you all should be able to see that pretty well. Um, <clears throat> Now this is with the spill set to zero, which is a midpoint, whereas smudge is zero all the way at the left. So uh, you always have to kind of look at what these settings are. Now, if I look at the original for comparison right now, you can see the detail in the window and uh, how flat everything kind of looks. Uh, let's go back to the image and you can see that some of these paint daubs have taken away some of the uh, distinction between the panes of glass and the frame and the wall. If we take that spill all the way to the left to into the negative 100%, we can still see some traces of uh, the paint strokes here, but we get that detail quite a bit back. And if we take it all the way to the right, then we can almost not see the window at all. So this is the effect of spill, is allowing more and more of those paint strokes. See, like, watch this one paint daub here one or two paint jobs, uh, where, where we spill. As we come down to negative, and all the way back to zero, and then to positive, 100%. You can see how that's really spilling over if we get the grand view here. Hard to tell that there was a window or a person or a flower basket. Uh, I guess we know sort of what that is. But um, if we take it to about halfway, positive, we get a little bit of it back. It's kind of a neat effect. And if we take it to zero, double click on the word, we're getting more recognizable. And I guess this is the starting point for it as far as the designers thought. Here's halfway <laughs> down on the spill. Uh, pretty good. And um, all the way to minus 100 if you want more detail. And so we're getting the paint strokes where we really want them on whatever subject. But we're not spilling over and losing the detail where we need the detail. So uh, let's put the spill back to zero, double click on it, and uh, look at the uh, a couple of bonus things. So one would be uh, the smudge. So let's go back to our 300 or so percent. And uh, right now we have uh, very sharp edges. As a matter of fact, on my screen, I'm seeing some artifact uh, created by blowing it up, pixel peaking. Uh, and perhaps by having these all pegged to the right, to their maximum, 
And if I take that smudge just a tiny bit up, maybe watch what happens to these dark edges here and here a little bit while I take it up just a little bit. This is just 0 0.01, so 1% up, and it is starting to get rid of that artifact for me. And there's 0 0.02. It's basically more of a solid line now instead of a bunch of little dots. And 0 0.03, 4, 5, 6, 7. So at 7 we still pretty much have the shape of those without getting too swirly like we were with sketchy uh, things. Let's put it to 23. And you can see that it's uh, blending our paint strokes. So there's uh, some effect of the smudge. I'm going to zero in again here. 300%. Maybe drag this down a little bit. And you can see that right now our paint strokes are uh, egg-shaped, right? If we want to change what that looks like, we can perhaps change the stroke width. And now they're round. We can take the stroke width narrower and get uh, more of a uh, narrow shape. And we can exaggerate that by bringing the stroke length up, perhaps going from a soft look to something more disturbing, huh? And uh, maybe more Leroy Neiman, uh, something like that. Uh, so that's a, a close-up look at what happens when you play with a couple of more things. Let's come zooming back in here. And we can add a little bit of smudge to that. A little more spill. Okay, so that's kind of like the bonus round for this one. And of course you would want to experiment with other brush shapes uh, to see the effect of spill, smudge, stroke length, stroke width, and all these other settings as we've discussed before. Uh, and it's going to vary from image to image, uh, detail size, uh, size of the image overall, as that changes as you crop, things like that, or which camera you're using. Okay, on to the next video. This is the original photo I took in Edinburgh of King George IV Street, uh, street scene. And uh, this is the Renoir sort of painting that I made out of it. And let's see what happens when we look at it in applying uh, that same impression uh, that I had last. And here's that same scene uh, with the uh, Type 16 brush, medium number of strokes, full brush size, paint volume, large volume, and paint opacity with spill at zero. Let's take it down to minus one. And now it gets a bit more recognizable. Obviously not something I would probably be happy with because it's not my taste. Uh, but if we go to high number of strokes and maybe take that brush stroke, uh, brush size down, and I would probably go with a narrower stroke width. 
in length, and let's see what happens. We get a, a lot more detail back, and I'd probably uh, bring these back up just a little bit. If I wanted it to look uh, very painterly, impressionistic. Maybe take that down a little. And then, remember, we have our spill to deal with. Do I want minus one or somewhere in between to get exactly the look that I would probably find acceptable? To review, this is the original photograph, the flat rendering of uh, Renoir style to the oils.